Monster.net. Just uh, thought I'd show you guys today, hopefully it's something you're interested in, um, how I edit the video, or the, sorry, the images, I call them street portraits, that I take uh, at my, one of my part-time gigs, which is uh, security at a bar I work at, and I edit them in the photography, uh, sorry, in Photoshop with Nick, the Nick Collection settings. Um, if you haven't heard of the Nick Collection, I suggest using or trying it. It's NIK Collection. It's offered by Google and it's amazing. Anyway, these are the two photos. This is a series of photos that I took. I took a few more than this. This one was slow sync. Um, and this is the last in the series. I took about five, four or five. This was the last one. Um, which is kind of a bit flat, but I really like the expression on James's face here. And I also think the slow sync isn't really doing much to this image other than making it just blurred. So this is when I took the slow sync off and I really like what's happening here. So I'm just going to quickly run you through the Nick collection. When you uh, um, install it, um, it uh, installs onto your actions and every time you open Photoshop it opens itself. So my um, a couple of points that I also, also wanted to point out is I always do all my editing on full size straight out of the camera images. This might seem logical and almost redundant to say, but for the longest time I would actually edit on the um, web sized images. The reason I did that and the reason I thought it made sense is that very often what you do to a full size image isn't exactly the same um, when you reduce it down to a, to a web size image. But now I want to print some of these eventually and I actually want to exhibit some of them and so I've started to do all my editing on full size images. So just really quick, oh, let's don't need that to show. I'm going to turn this into black and white. Um, I think that this will look really cool in black and white. So black and white filters, for want of a better word, on the Nick collection are here under Silver Effects Pro. So we click on it. it. Takes a little while because it is a full size image. Um, if you haven't heard of the Nick collection while well, this is waiting to open, was developed by a guy called Nick and it's just amazing. Um, why I use it is I want my photos to look like film. Um, I love digital photography, I love digital cameras because of the freedom that it gives you. Um, and I, but I used to shoot film for a long time. Long, long time. So I want my images to look as much, as less digital as I possibly can. And Nick Collection does that. So it's right out of the bat, this is just a desaturated version of that image. Down here, I find um, on the top left hand corner here in the Silver FX catalog, I pretty much just stick to the classics. Um, some of the vintage ones are okay, but I've had the best results with classic. So this is actually on a new laptop that I'm shooting this or recording this. On my other laptop, I actually have a whole lot of favorite saved, favorite filters. Hmm. Not really feeling these at the moment, actually. I'm going to break that rule and try some vintage ones. No.
So this is a bit boring for you guys, I'm sorry about that. Just clicking through and straight up, I don't like any of them. So I'm going to cancel out of that. What I normally do and what I thought I'd skip this time um, is I actually normally put my images through Analog Effects Pro. Um, and there's a few presets that I've, custom presets that I've made that make a lot of my images that you can see either on brickfoster.net or my Tumblr, some people doing stuff.tumblr.com. Um, and it makes them all look similar, um, but gives them a nice gradient. I like that. Uh, one thing I will show you over on the right here, Dude and Scratches. You zoom right in. Oh, it's not there. Yeah. Unless you want your images to look like they've been taken on a toy camera, I suggest you take off Dude and Scratches. Now, what, the really interesting thing to play with is under these film types on the right hand side as well. Just by clicking through some of these, they're basically. Oh, that's cool. They've scanned it. They used a whole lot of different sort of old school film results. I like that one. Yeah, I like that a lot, actually. But I still think this is probably best. No, I really like that. Let's see what it looks like with a bit of more of a vignette as well. And with this vignette, you can drag the the origin point of the vignette around. Yep, I really like that. Might be a little bit too grainy. I like what it's done. I really like what it's doing, the central one to the highlights around here, around the faces and skin tones. But I don't like the grain. I might help detail its direction a little bit and the brightness. Okay, yeah, that's cool. So, just by way of comparison, that's what we started with. Very digital looking image, very flat, very clean for what it is. Very not digital looking image. This image would be really hard to shoot. This would be a very difficult result to get. Um, natively, for want of a better description, um, I don't know how any filter sort of situation. And you could probably, on some of the Olympus cameras, there's probably filters that you could shoot that would give you something similar. Actually, thinking about it, but yep, I'm gonna go with that. Takes a little while to process through. I've actually done this video once before, but the, I'm just getting used to the easy vid recorder and I didn't turn on sound. So this is the second time through that I've edited this. Last time I ended it up with a black and white, which I might actually open actually, that could be interesting. 
this up. This is how I edited to the image last time. Hmm. Not really different. You know what? I think I like this one better. So, one thing I did that I'm now going to do on this is that I did on the black and white is sharpen it a little bit. This is how much I sharpened it last time. I just like what it did. You see the difference there? It's just sort of making the eyes pop a little bit without bringing out too much sort of harshness on the hair or anything. Chain. Yep, I think you're the same again. Yep, that's cool. It's a subtle difference, but it is a big difference. So, I'm not going to crop this even this time. I'm not going to take out the cigarette butt. No, you're going to leave it exactly as it is. So I'm going to save a version of this in case I want to come back to it sometime, some stage. Um, I'm going to save a PSD of it. Images that I put on my Tumblr and generally, therefore, on my um, breakfaster.net, I save at either 900 high or wide at 72 dpi. So that is the finished size on my screen, which is a 15 inch laptop. Save for weaving devices. Hmm, I just saw something there that is annoying me. This is that cheating a little bit, really. Little things like that. It probably was ash, but it really stood out. Okay, save for weaving device. Oops, what did I do there? I regretted. Save for weaving devices. I just save as very high, normally about 80 quality. Um, progressive is. Yeah. Was it the 90s the last time we used progressive? No, probably early 2000s. So save that. I'm just going to save it as version 3. And you can see on the end of the tail of the description there, I put the size. And that's to differentiate if I end up with you know, different sizes in the same folder. I know which one just from looking at it. And that's it. So yeah, this was the color slice sync version, this is the color muted version, very different look to a lot of the images that are on my site, but I really like it, um, might be a new color grading that I start using, and this is the black and white, which I also really like, I think I'm going to go, I think I'm going to stick the color this color grading version on the site. Um, yeah, try Nick Collection, NIK Collection. I uh, hope you like it. Please visit my site, brickfoster.net. Um, and if you like the video, please like it. Um, subscribe if you'd like to see more. Please leave me more comments. Uh, and if you like this sort of video, I'd be happy to do more. I need it.
tons of videos or tons of images every week, probably 20 or 30 a week, um, and be happy to switch on the recording and show you guys the process if you're interested in that. So please let me know, and thanks for watching.